Storytime with a Firefighter. Daryl Knight, The Standard. Brock. Families in Sunderland are gearing up for an exciting literary adventure as the Sunderland branch of the Brock Public Library prepares to host Storytime with a Firefighter on Tuesday, April 16th at 3.30 p.m. This special event, which coincides with, with National Library Week, promises an afternoon of fun, learning, and community engagement. Children will have the opportunity to gather around as local firefighters take on the role of guest readers, sharing thrilling tales which not only entertain but also educate about the importance of fire safety and the heroic work of firefighters. Library coordinator Sarah Thompson expressed her anticipation for the event, highlighting its significance in promoting literacy and fostering connections within the community. Storytime with a firefighter is an excellent opportunity for children to interact with our local heroes in a unique and engaging way, Sarah Thompson said. We're thrilled to offer this special event to our young readers and their families, providing both entertainment and valuable lessons on fire safety. In addition to the captivating stories, children will get an up-close look at a real fire truck, have the chance to meet and chat with firefighters, and even try on firefighter gear. The hands-on experience aims to spark curiosity and inspire a deeper appreciation for the important work done by firefighters. With excitement building and families eagerly anticipating the event, Storytime with a Firefighter at the Sunderland branch of the Brock Public Library promises to be an afternoon to remember, uniting literature, learning, and community spirit in one unforgettable experience. Recent conditions delay Scugog burn ban. Dan Kearns, The Standard, Scugog. With current weather conditions, Scugog's fire chief happily told councillors at a meeting on Monday, April 8th, the municipality so far hasn't needed to implement a spring burn ban as of yet. If our conditions continue, I'm very optimistic it would be a short burn ban season this year in the spring, Chief Mark Burney said. Scugog Township annually enacts a burn ban in the spring to protect from the risk of fires on dry conditions after the snow has melted. Looking at the forecast, it may perhaps be a week away, but as is the case every year, if we do go to a burn ban, those who have permits will be notified via email or how they've chosen us to communicate with them, the fire chief explained. Ontario Premier calls for the carbon tax to end. Dan Kearns, The Standard. Durham, Kawartha Lakes. Ontario Premier Doug Ford spoke out against the federal government's recent carbon tax increase at a press conference on Tuesday, April 2nd. As of April 1st, the Canadian federal government increased the carbon tax pricing to $80 per tonne. It was previously $65 per tonne. The tax is meant to encourage businesses to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. I just wish I could say I was happy about what we are here to talk about today, Premier Ford said. Yesterday, on April 1st, against the urging of premiers of every political stripe across our country, the federal government raised the carbon tax yet again, this time by a whopping 23%. The premier called for an end to the federal government's carbon tax. Because of this awful carbon tax, families across Ontario spent their Easter weekends lined up around the block, waiting to fill their gas tanks up one more time before the increase kicked in, he explained. We're all here today to make it clear we stand against the carbon tax because we know Ontario families deserve to keep more money, their hard-earned money, in their own pockets. Premier Ford cited the fact cost of living has never been higher and stated he feels Prime Minister Justin Trudeau won't win the next election if he doesn't eliminate the carbon tax. This carbon tax is killing businesses, Premier Ford said. This is just punishing, crippling companies out there, and we're going to fight it tooth and nail every day. New pickleball and tennis courts coming to fields of Uxbridge. Daryl Knight, The Standard, Uxbridge. Residents of Uxbridge are in for an exciting development. As plans for new tennis and pickleball courts at the fields of Uxbridge Recreation Complex were recently unveiled. The courts are anticipated to be completed by mid-2025. These facilities promise to enhance the recreational landscape of the community, 
offering more opportunities for outdoor activity and social engagement. The announcement comes as a result of growing demand for additional sports infrastructure in the area. Tennis and pickleball, both popular racket sports, have been gaining momentum in Uxbridge and surrounding areas, with enthusiasts eagerly awaiting expanded facilities to accommodate their passion. The proposed project outlines the construction of multiple courts catering for both tennis and pickleball players. This inclusivity is a testament to the recreational complex's commitment to serving diverse interests within the community. The township anticipates this new project could be a significant source of increased activity at the fields of Uxbridge. According to a township news release, the courts come after positive feedback and participation from the temporary indoor pickleball courts established in the arena last summer. As the community eagerly anticipates the completion of this ambitious project, stakeholders are encouraged to provide feedback and input to ensure the facilities meet the needs and expectations of all residents. With the project in the planning stages, Oxbridge is on track to elevate its status as a premier destination for sports and leisure enthusiasts alike. Kawartha Lakes receives $1.5 million for their work on housing. Dan Kearns, The Standard, Kawartha Lakes. The city of Kawartha Lakes is receiving about $1.5 million from the Ontario Provincial Government for making progress on their 2023 housing goal. On Thursday, April 4th, Matthew Ray, Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, as well as Kawartha Lakes Council members and municipal staff, gathered in council chambers for an announcement. The city will be receiving a total of $1,566,177 from the province's Building Faster Fund. The funding is tied to goals the city set when they accepted stronger mayor powers from the province in October, as well as housing targets set by the provincial government. According to a Kawartha Lakes press release, the city broke ground on 431 new housing units last year. The city's goal is 6,500 new units by 2031. As we all know, housing is a pressing need across Ontario, across Toronto, but also across rural Ontario. I know in my own communities, every municipality, they understand the need to build, MPP Ray said. To do that, we obviously need to get shovels in the ground faster. The parliamentary assistant added the province is focused on giving municipalities the tools they need so every resident has a place to call home. In a statement, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing Paul Calandra reacted to the City of Kawartha Lakes' progress. I applaud the work being done by Kawartha Lakes, and all the other municipalities are making substantial progress towards their housing targets, and I am proud to see these communities helping lead the province when it comes to building homes. Our government is committed to reaching our goal of building 1.5 million homes by 2031 to make sure everyone has an affordable place to call home. Mayor Doug Elmsley called the announcement a banner day for us and for the future of Kawartha Lakes. The funding will help us get ready to bring more homes to our community, 65,000 homes by 2031 to be exact, and with over 500 units pledged for 2024 alone, he said. This $1.5 million means we can keep moving forward with our development plans and streamlining the administrative process, which is very important to us. Teaming up with our dedicated staff, many of whom are here today, Council and I are on a mission to ensure the homes we greenlight cater to all budgets, because everyone deserves a place called home. It's not just about approving housing starts, it's about constructing a sense of community. Welcome to You've Got to Be Kidding, a podcast that offers a different perspective of life around us. Listen now to author Jonathan Van Bilsen. As the population ages, seniors are increasingly becoming targets for scams and fraudulent schemes. With advancements in technology and changes in social dynamics, scammers have developed more sophisticated methods to exploit the vulnerabilities of older adults. From financial scams to healthcare fraud, seniors are facing a multitude of threats that can jeopardize their financial security and well-being. One of the most common scams targeting seniors is financial fraud. Scammers often use tactics such as phishing emails, phone calls, impersonating government officials or financial institutions, and fraudulent investment schemes to trick seniors into handing over their money. 
These scams prey on seniors' trust and lack of familiarity with technology, making them more susceptible to manipulation. Healthcare fraud is another significant concern for seniors. Scammers may pose as healthcare providers or insurance representatives, offering fake medical services or products at exorbitant prices. They may also exploit OHIP programs by billing for services that were never provided or charging for unnecessary procedures. Seniors' reliance on health care services and insurance coverage make them prime targets for these types of scams. Social isolation is a contributing factor to the vulnerability of seniors to scams. Many older adults live alone and have limited social interaction, making them more susceptible to manipulation by scammers who prey on their loneliness and desire for companionship. Scammers may use online dating sites to, or social media platforms to establish fake relationships with seniors, only to exploit them for money or personal information. Furthermore, cognitive decline associated with aging can impair seniors' judgment and decision-making abilities, making them more susceptible to scams. Memory loss, confusion, and difficulty processing information can make it challenging for seniors to recognize the fraudulent schemes or remembering previous warnings about scams. To address the issue of seniors being scammed, there is a need for increased awareness and education. Seniors should be informed about common scams targeting older adults and equipped with strategies to protect themselves. This includes being cautious about sharing personal information, verifying the legitimacy of callers or emails, and seeking advice from trusted family members or financial advisors before making any financial decision. Remember, never give out personal information to anyone you don't personally know and never give money to any cause unless you are 100% aware of who they are and that they're real. I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen, and this is You've Got to Be Kidding. You've Got to Be Kidding was presented by X4 Media with permission from the Standard Media Group. We endeavor to make all information contained in this program as accurate as possible at production time. X4 Media and the Standard Media Group are not responsible for any liabilities resulting from information contained in this program. For more information, please visit x4media.ca. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper.